Okay, this video is to help you learn how to use JASP for non-parametric tests. So uh, today we'll focus on just chi-square and then the Mann-Whitney tests. So first with chi-square, here I have uh, a simplified data file, but an actual data file from Campus Life Survey. And so you'll notice the, the different variables we have here. We've got the year in school, uh, the gender of the participant, um, we have their score on what's called an ethnocultural um, empathy scale. And so the score is from 1 to 7. 7 is a higher empathy. Uh, a religious questing scale, 1 to 7. Um, 7 uh, is more questing, uh, religious questing. And then the last one is their study abroad experience, whether or not they've already had a study abroad experience whether they plan to but haven't had one yet or that they have no plans and haven't studied abroad so it, for the chi-square what we're looking at you'll notice here for the chi-square remember for the non-parametric test we're looking for categorical variables to use so we wouldn't run a chi-square if we were using any, either of these two variables here they're on a con, they're continuous variables so if we want to see okay is there, there a difference between uh, for gender in study abroad experience, uh, we'd go to frequencies, the contingency table, and then um, so we're, we'll want to look at gender and then study abroad. So we put those two there. You'll notice it already gives us the chi-square test automatically off of our statistics. Chi-square is fine for what it is that we're gonna what we're gonna want for this. So it already gives us that. I think it's also helpful to get um, uh, expected frequencies. So the expected frequencies, that's what it is that we would expect if they were, if the null hypothesis were, was accurate, was true. Um, and so whenever we see a difference there and the larger difference that we see between the observed or the count and the expected count, um, that's when it, we're more likely to see a significant difference take place there. So we see it here, a strong difference, not much of a difference here, and then a bit and a little bigger difference here. Same thing here for the um, for the men. And I think it's also helpful to get percentages for it. So um, and actually, it's a, a so so we go through. You, sometimes you got to play around with this for the row and column. I think if we look at the row, that those look like the percentages we want. So this is telling us that 27.8 percent of females um, have had a study abroad experience already. Only 19.8 of males have had a study abroad experience. Uh, and you notice here for, for planning to study abroad we've got some similarities between males and females and then again the ones who are saying no hey, I have no plans to study abroad I haven't studied abroad I have no plans to more likely to see men in that category and so that's what created that significant difference so if we look here we've got our chi-square here's our value of 6.288 our degrees of freedom of 2 and then our p-value. So remember that our, our heuristic here is any anything that's 0 0.05 or less, that's a statistically significant difference. Uh, that is the exact the probability of getting a chi-square value this large by chance is about 4%. Okay, that's under 5%. Okay, we say we have a statistically significant difference there. Okay, so that's that's how you can run a chi-square in JASP. Uh, let's quickly look at the, the Wilcoxon. Um, Man Whitney. So we look at the Man Whitney test here. If we're going to look at two variables, you know, we look, uh, you know, we look at gender, and um, let's say on on the empathy, eth ethnocultural empathy. So you'll notice here it already had student clicked. You know, that's the the typical t test that we that we would use. And so that's one way in which we could go about um, gathering that information. We see it's a statistically significant difference, and actually. That's what we would probably really use in, in this particular test. Um, the t value is large and it's less than 0 0.001, so we've got a statistically significant difference. But if we clicked on Man Whitney, that would be the non parametric version. So basically, it's taking those scores and ranking them. And so here's the statistic that we have, and then that p value is also um, less than 0 0.001, so we have a statistically significant difference there as well. And we can get our effect sizes um, for each, and uh, and then also our descriptive statistics, 
And here in our descriptive statistics, that's where we see, okay, yes, it's the women who are scoring um, significantly higher than the than the men on the ethnocultural empathy, which is honestly typical of what it is that we see on, on various empathy scales. So hopefully, I know that was pretty quick, but gives you a sense of two different ways in which you could look at non-parametric tests in JASP.